when we shift to a value of waiting, see, there's something that you have that is more valuable than any other resource in this world. It's actually, nobody can give you more of it or take, take from it from you. It's something you have and you have a certain allotment of and that no one else will be able to, 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 to buy from you. You can't sell it. It's priceless. And that's your time. It's your physical time. See, when you give God your own time, what you're saying is, God, I'm going to spend my most valuable resource on you. And when you shift to a value of waiting, that is what you're doing, is you're spending one of the most valuable resources that you have on you. In Psalm 123, 2, it says this, as the eyes of the Lord looks to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to our God until he has mercy on us. It's important that we don't despise the waiting because in the waiting, you're being prepared for the weighty things of God. Now, when it comes to waiting, we need to learn how to manage our process. In Genesis 29, it's one of my favorite stories. I love the life of Jacob. Um, I love reading about it, and I love what the Lord shows me through the life of Jacob. In Genesis 29, Jacob is fleeing the land of it, uh, and his, uh, his brother because his brother wants to kill him. His mother says, go to the land where I'm from. Go to Haran. Find yourself a wife. And Jacob, and I'm going to paraphrase this story. If I read you Genesis 29, it wouldn't be a good meaning. But I encourage you, read this for yourself. It's important as Christians we read our Bibles. I know this is funny that I'm telling you this, but the majority of us don't. And so make sure what I'm saying is true. In Genesis 29, it says that he goes to the land that his mother's from, and he goes to the, the town there, and he, he's, he goes to the well, and he sees the shepherd boys, he's talking to them, and he sees this, my paraphrase, fine young woman at the well. And he goes to the shepherd boys, who is that? And they go, oh, her? That's Rachel. And he goes over to Rachel, and, 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 he, and he loves Rachel. He, he, he introduces himself to her, and he, they find out that, you know, they're cousins, and, and we're just going to ignore that part, all right, okay? It's culturally, <laughs> we're just going to go right over that. And, and, and that his mother and her, her father are brother and sister, and so she takes him back to uh, her house, and, and, and it says that Jacob is so in love with Rachel that, that he works for Laban for free. Now listen. Only love would make a man show up every day for 30 days and work for free. Laban is feeling guilty about this. And he says, look, look, Jacob, tell me what your wages are. You're my blood. I, I can't have you working for me and I can't pay you and, and not pay you. Tell me, what do you want your wages to be? And Jacob says, give me Rachel. I want Rachel. And Laban says, fine, work for me for seven years. And I promise, I'll give you Rachel. It says that those seven years fly by so quickly because he's so in love. And on that wedding night, I don't know what kind of party they were having. <laughs> we're going to kind of ignore that part too. But for some odd reason, that night, Laban doesn't send in Rachel sends in Leah. And in the morning, I love how every one of your Bibles says this, every translation. In the morning, it says this, Behold, <laughs> Leah. Oh man, I've had this moment. I think we've all had this moment. We go to church, we have a conference, something happens, God touches us, we hear from the Lord, we get the promise of the Lord. It's like, and, and, and we, yes, God! to the nations yes I'll, yeah I'll be a prophet to the nations or whatever God's called us to and we're like yeah yeah we're crying and and we sing worship songs that if we prayed them they'd be scary but because they're music with them we're okay with it it's like mold me make me crush me pound me in the sand you know like and 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 God's like 
all right, you asked for it, you know, like, I, I don't know, just, <laughs> and, and so, and so there's, there's this whole interaction happening, and, 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 you know, you finally, you, 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 next week, you go to church, you talk to a pastor, you're like, hi, pastor, Paul Martini, prophet to the nations, and he's like, oh, that's amazing, Paul, thank God he sent you, here's a toilet brush, go clean the toilet, and you're like, what? Behold, Leah. God, you, you said to the nations, about this. Come on. I, I, I remember uh, uh, Jacob, rightly so, he goes over to Laban and he says, what have you done to me? Laban's a shyster. I mean, I'll, I'll, call, I'll call it, you know, the, he, what he did was wrong. But you have to also understand something. Laban's also a father who loves his daughters. And he knew that if Rachel was married before Leah, in that culture, Leah probably would have never been married. And so a loving father as Laban was, whether you feel he was right or wrong, said this. Love Leah. Give her the wedding week she deserves. Essentially, that's a honeymoon in their culture. Give her the wedding week she deserves. And I'll give you, Rachel, if you work for me for another seven years. That's the shyster part. I mean, that's wrong, all right? Okay. But this is really interesting. In Genesis 29, verse 31, this is what the whole thing just unfolds for me because it says this. When God saw that Leah was unloved, Actually, the original translation says, hate it. Most translation, translators dumb it down so it doesn't seem so harsh, but it really means hate it. When God saw that Lee was hated, Rachel's womb remained barren. When you hate your process, your promise will remain barren. See, even when that process is unjustifiably given to you, God still expects you to love your process. It's not enough to tolerate your process. Tolerating your process only reveals a character flaw that you need more process. I'm sorry, man. It's true, it's true. Tolerating your process isn't enough. He expects you to love it. I remember when um, I was in Global School Supernatural Ministry, which is a wonderful school. I, you know, I just, as a side note, I love all the academic and educational things that Dr. Randy Clark has started. From practical ministry that's taught me to academic scholarship through uh, avenues like United Theological Seminary, um, the Global Awakening Theological Seminary, the Christian online programs that we have, the summer intensive, that there's so many things and, and opportunities for you to learn how to grow. Um, I, I went to Global School of Supernatural Ministry. I had an uh, offer to be a, a pastor of evangelism. Um, the pastor was gonna uh, give me a house. They had several parsonages, a house, a car, and a salary. I thought, that's the Lord. And um, through a dream and several other words, and uh, Randy, being so gracious, had asked me, would, would, you, would you hold that off and intern for me for a little bit and come, come with me for another year? And, and I agreed to do that. And, um, and actually, while I even traveled with Randy, that church ended up going through a significant uh, circumstance and, and letting go of the pastor that they hired and fired all the staff he hired. So God actually spared me from a real tragedy. Becoming Dr. Randy Clark's assistant or intern is a high honor. And, um, and you actually can't ask to be his intern. Often the staff has to nominate you, then you go through an interview process and several interviews. And so it was, it was a real honor when I was selected to be his intern. And I was like, okay, God, you know, I was trying to compare prophetic words over my life. I was like, I thought I'd be pastoring, but okay, maybe this, you know, maybe, you know, you just start, you know how you try to connect the dots for God? Like, okay, God, I, 
I can see what you're doing here, you know. So I'm like, okay, maybe this is what God's doing. And, and so, you know, and, and, and there was this, it's such a high honor as a student to be his intern. So I finally get introduced to the staff my first day, and they're showing me around all these beautiful offices, and I'm thinking, oh, wow, and I'm introducing everyone. Hi, I'm Paul Martini, Randy Clark's intern. How you doing? It's good to see you. You know, oh, and they're showing me all the departments. Hey, Paul Martini, Randy Clark's intern. How's it going? Yeah, you know, just, just and, uh, and then... Um, and then they show me, you know, the big warehouse we have with all these pallets of books. It's just tons of square footage. And, and uh, I was like, oh, this is great. Yeah, this is nice, you know. And, and, uh, and then they, they show me a tape gun. They're like, behold, Leah. <laughs> what, is, what is this? What is this contraption? And I did a lot of things for Dr. Randy Clark with planning his meetings and stuff, but there were so many books that we would bring on our, and, we, and they needed to be packed. And, and I found out the, the intern's the lowest position on the total vault. <laughs> and, and I'm like, God, what am I doing? I gave up a career. I, I, I cashed in, you know, life savings to try to keep going. And, and, I, and, and there was things that I did that financially I wouldn't tell anyone to do if they told me what they were going to do. I'd say, that's unwise. You need to be a good steward. You know, all these things. And, but I, I just knew it was the Lord, so I did it. But, but I'm like, God, what am I doing? I'm working 50, 60 hours a week. You know, a lot of it's packing boxes. And, 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 and I hated it. At the best, I was tolerating it. I loved being with you, Randy. It's hard for you to sit in on this. But packing boxes was not, was not my, you know, high calling. You know what I mean? People would be going home because the, the employees would go home because they had nine to five jobs and they would go back to their families. And I'm there, you know, in, the, in, in this empty place packing books. And I realized something, that this wasn't something that God had for me to tolerate, but he wanted me to love. Because there was things that he was gonna still need to be produced in me that wasn't produced yet. And there was character things that needs to be taken out or put in. You know what's so significant is Jacob's four, his first four children, Jacob's first four children, are with Leah. The first four children is Judah, Simeon, Levi, and Reuben. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. And what's so significant about that is the meaning of their names. Reuben means to see. Simeon means to hear. Levi means to be at one with. And Judah means to praise. And when you love your process, when you love your Leah, you produce the offspring to see him, to hear him, to be at one with him, and to praise him no matter the circumstance. So that when your Joseph's born, who's the epitome of wisdom, influence, anointing, and power, you're strong enough to carry it. See, oftentimes the process that you're in is purposeful so that God can produce in you what needs to be produced for what you're called to carry. And to tolerate it is not enough. To hate it is not right, but to love it is what God's called you to. I started to love that process. I decided and purposed in my heart that I'm going to make this the best position available. I'm going to do this with such excellence. I want this to be uh, the biggest blessing for Global Awakening and for Dr. Randy Clark. I want to grow this book store thing. I want to grow the anything that we can. God, whatever you put my hands to, I'm going to grow. I'm going to make sure that it succeeds. Not because I want to glorify myself, but I want to, I'm going to love this. And that's what I ended up doing. So I ended up loving that process.